Hey guys, it's Baba and I'm back with another tutorial and I'm going to do this one as a tutorial and a speed draw for this too. And I wanted to show you how I've been doing more lineless stuff and making it a little bit quicker just to put flats down and make silhouettes if I don't have super tidy line up. Okay, so I'm going to be looking at this one and first of all I just want to take the texture that I have on the top off and I'm going to zoom like right the way in so you guys can see the edges on these and how like nice and crispy they are so that I have everything set out. Some of the bits I've done over the top on different layers with painting the kind of details on like this and hair and stuff. So I've separated out a little bit but if I get rid of everything I pretty much just had like a silhouette underneath and then kind of worked more layers onto the top of it like so. But, if you kind of look at the hair and that, it's this very pointy shapes like this and kind of around here that would be a lot more difficult to get with a brush, especially when you have it like on the edges like this. If you don't have a very tapery brush, or I tend to have difficulty getting a nice tapery brush that's very solid like a pen brush. So, what I've been using instead is, and if I just go and reduce all of these, like this so we have it almost like a loose sketch and I make a new layer on the top. What I'm going and choosing from my little menu over here out of the tools, if I just bring it by here, is if we go to the shapes menu and if I go into just my sub tool settings here you're gonna have all these different shapes. So you're probably already familiar with like the shape tool and being able to just, you know, go and make different shapes with the different tools like this. You know, you've got like circles and things. If I bring the tool property out as well, you've got stuff like, you know, being able to fill it in or just have the outline. But the one I've been using through here, got all just the different blocks and stuff. The polyline's pretty good for like straight blocky things like so. But there's one down here called the lasso fill. And if I go and grab that, and let's pick something a little bit nicer than that red. I can just go around and kind of block things in like this. And if I just kind of trace it as though I've got a sketch, it allows me to go like this. And because there's no kind of pen pressure on here, I'm not ending up with any little curvy bits. I'm just able to make these very nice pointy edges which I always had a trouble with but now that I'm trying this kind of thing it's making it like infinitely easier to be able to do this kind of thing like so and even if I take all these off we've got like a very sharp shape there now. Let's change the color so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm gonna use the transparency lock up there and let's go for like, let's go for like just a darker grey. I can also do this and just fill it in since I have my transparency lock on. But this just makes it so much easier. What One thing I did accidentally with this when I drew this thing though, to take the lock off again so I can actually draw, um, was to have the anti-aliasing on which you will see in the tool property here. You've just got a little anti-aliasing option and we've got the very, very crunchiest one right down on the left side with the little very pixely looking circle that is the most aliased option that I would want for doing this kind of thing so we don't end up with like you can see underneath. If you look at the difference between these, you can see this one I've just done along here where we can't see it underneath anyway is quite sharp and then these ones are a little bit softer where I've used it more like this with this setting on in the anti-aliasing so it's just very low so we've got that kind of wash out on the edges but when I was doing this as you'll see with the speed paint is that I did not clean up the sketch very much at all. I had a very rough sketch that just blocked the placements of everything out and being able to do that and you know 
block out my shapes like this means that I don't have to go and do outlines for this, which I wouldn't have ended up keeping anyway because I wanted to do this in a nice little lineless style and I'm kind of slowly adapting to using it. I'm even using it with other stuff if you've seen my other videos where I'm just getting a tidy sketch that I would use anyway to keep everything in the right place and then going and blocking my flats in and my silhouettes just like this so that I have a flat background and then go in and maybe add in like different chunks on like I think I have the horns separate or some of the designs like on the patterns and stuff so we've got the overall shape there and then I've kind of copied separate parts of it to fill in to just the hair so that I can control where I'm putting these colors in a little bit easier but well, anyway, that's how I go about doing that. Well, let's get into the speed paint. Okay, so now I'm just going to let the whole speed paint play through and I'm going to narrate all of it as well because I, I kind of want to go over a little bit more of the different things that I'm doing. Uh, anyways, I have a bit of a false start with this where I'm trying to figure out how I want them stood. I know I wanted them in a line, but I wanted to keep them a little bit more tidy. Um, also the references I have up the top belong to Cherry. I will put a link to her AU that these characters are from down in the description. All of the troll designs uh, and the illustrations that you can see up the top are by Cherry. The Carapician designs are my ones though, so I'm just kind of playing around with all of them and making them a little bit different and seeing what fits for them, uh, just for a bit of fun. I kind of wanted to mess about with this style for a while. I, hmm, I guess I'm kind of going with a more homestucky style, but a bit more detailed than it usually is and trying to make it a bit more flouncy and fun and a bit more energy to it, which has helped actually, because like I say, I've kind of picked up on how to do just these flat chunks and kind of lineless stuff. And I'm starting to work that into the way I do regular things, even though it's just to start things out most of the time. Or I kind of add it for effects as well. If I have swooshy clouds and things, I'll usually go and put those down with this kind of thing just to get the shape idea. Um, it's quite good if you have very rough sketches that you just want to block things down with as well. Or even if you're trying to do more of a finished thing and you need just a silhouette to start working from, from it, kind of in the same way that I would go and select around line art and then invert it to get the same thing. Uh, but you know, if, if I don't really need the line art, then there's not much point. Uh, this sketch that I'm doing is not going to be the final one that I use as the reference. I get everyone in the right kind of places and lined up properly and then I go and do another sketch to clean it up after this one. Um, I know the character in the middle there gets moved over further to the end. They, they all kind of get shuffled around a little bit because I didn't like the order very much at a certain point. I also plan on doing another one of these so that it extends a little bit more because Cherry has more human characters for this AU that I want to draw as well. So I'll probably make another panel of this and I was thinking of having it, um, or at least trying it out so I, that I can get it joined together so that it loops around and then kind of scrolls across the screen in a loop. I think that would be kind of cool. Just get it to join up at either end in terms of the way the characters are moving and how close together they are. I think that might look neat. That's that's going to be a whole nother thing of messing about with though because this one took me a long time. I just kind of did it in between commissions for a little bit of fun and to test stuff out. A little, little bit of kind of a study test thing for stylization which yeah has helped. I guess I've kind of been doing my own AU stuff for fun so what I learned from this and how I was going about the stylization is something that I'm going and applying to that. Uh, I guess I should put a link to that in the description. I'm kind of not really posting about it. It's a thing I'm going to save for Patreon <laughs> um, to put the kind of bonus stuff for that or, you know, posting it earlier or something. As well as things like storyboards, because I think that would that would be interesting. Um, anyways, here I go with this next cleanup sketch for it. Just trying to make it all a little bit tidier. She's got little star glasses, which are adorable. Uh, Maple, there at the front. Something that I've also been trying to do with my sketches and it's not quite as apparent in these ones because this is a little bit older. I can't remember exactly when I drew this. It was probably kind of early this year, maybe like January, February 2021. But I'm starting to try and use more blocky square brushes. The one I'm using is actually the Photoshop chalk brush for some of this, I think. I might have shifted to the G-Pen partway through it though, so it's a little bit more crispy. 
Um, but I'm trying to do that and use fewer lines and make just my shapes a little bit more confident in the way that I'm drawing them. It looks okay on the little shirt that I just drew and the dress and the legs, I think. Um, when I try and apply it to more complex forms or more realistic anatomy, I have a little bit more issue with it because I very much like my swirly shapes, but I'm trying to kind of maintain the movement in just these simplified ones. Um, I think that's why I play around with the shapes of legs a little bit. I was thinking of standardizing those down to where you can see on the second guy, they're a little bit wider as they go to the bottom, but they're kind of skinnier on Maple at the front where she's got the little tiny feet and like the chunky legs <laughs> for the contrast. I had a period a while ago where I was really into like panty and stocking style art. I, I guess I still kind of am, but the, the feet uh, and I guess sometimes the hands being a little bit bigger and kind of tapering out in, in the reverse of what you would normally see. So they're wider at the bottom and skinnier at the top. It's a little bit of a remnant of that. I, I kind of like that in the designs, especially for feet, because you can simplify them a whole lot more and they don't end up looking like weird clown feet. Although that's a variation I, I would probably do if I drew like a Gamzee in here. <laughs> Give me like weird long skinny clown feet. Actually, what I'm talking about as well in the stream, and I'm just dragging in there, is an old kind of style that I'm drawing from a little bit more. These are a bit more dumpy and more refined, but there's a jade that I drew, I guess, a couple of years ago. That's a similar style, just not not as complete as this. You can see a lot more of the panty and stocking influence in that old one, though. Not so much in these. They are kind of becoming more my own thing as I am moving away from it and integrating other different kind of styles that I like into this and developing my own more, I suppose. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I never think that I have a style. I kind of have a bunch, but I never think of it as a style. I always think of it as a collection of incompetences that I just have not ironed out yet. Like, there's a, there's a little bit of a style. There's a hint of a style in here that I can refine, like I've refined it from that last one of the jade ones that I showed. But it's gonna be a long way to get there, to get it where I want. <laughs> and then moving on to the last little bit of the sketch with these two, I think I had a bit of fuss with maybe not making them tall enough or making some of them too tall just cause they're like spread out quite far over the canvas. So I, I pick them up and move them around at some point just to compare the heights and sizes of all of them. Uh, to make sure that they fit right because they do have set sizes in terms of how tall they are in relation to each other. Uh, I did want quite a lot of variation in it though so that they weren't all the same size. I think that can get a little bit boring um, with these more simplified styles. I, I don't know. I feel like the more you simplify a style the less interest you get in it. It's like with chibis where Things like old people with wrinkles do not read well on chibis like at all Are you just you know You can't put that much face variation in them because they're so simple and that kind of annoys me <laughs> Quite a lot. So I try and work in different body shapes like specifically um, To make them look different and a little bit more varied which is you know I was kind of messing about with the legs and stuff um, I find with a lot of more simplified styles. It's like Hmm. things will have one main character and they'll have a very a very nice looking style that fits for them because it's obviously designed just for that one character and then everyone else isn't given the same amount of attention which you know makes sense but they're kind of just drawn from that standard that there is set for the way that one you know main character or whatever is drawn um there's not a lot of variation like in, in the style or in the world um, with the more simplified ones and that really annoys me. <laughs> um, I kind of understand when it's like a time thing or trying to keep it more simple so it's easier to animate but I'm like oh geez come on just you know make, make people different shapes please. <laughs> I guess I have a little bit more time to do it though because I'm more illustrate than animate. -y. I'm also very fussy and picky, so I, I don't know if that's something that everyone else thinks about, but it's it's very much a peeve that I have. <laughs> um, the little selfie stick there, I, I was quite proud of how I managed to get the telescopic pieces on it that fold away into each other just by the line weight resizing or the, the oh, what is it? It's like pixel resizing, you can make it like more or less pixels just by running the pen over it, it's pretty cool. 
Uh, also, the hair that I'm doing here is on a different layer because I wanted to keep it separated. Um, I think I, yeah, you can see on the layers that I have a mask for where everything is and then I'm just putting this hair over the top so that it lines up with everything and just kind of sits over the top of it. Um, but it's easy to change the color of on its own. I don't want to have to put more details in and then like figure out that I want to change the color and just end up making a mess. What I'm also going to be doing is separating the clothes out onto their own layer. Uh, the horns are still on this base skin layer because, um, I don't know, I kind of wanted to mess about with the colors more and give myself room to change them and not cause any kind of mess by everything, having everything on the same layer. Um, which, to be honest, I could have done. I could have done that, but I screwed up the anti-alias in when I put everything down, so it would have just made a huge mess if I tried to use the full tool and change colors. <laughs> so I had to go with a different layer approach um, and just been able to turn them on and off. Uh, we've got like the hat on the hair layer, I think, as well as um, WM's markings and stuff too, just to keep those out of the way. And then we go in and doing the same with the clothes here. I think that sits underneath the hair so that they don't interfere as well. Uh, but we have those blanked out so that I can go and put my, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. oh geez, what's it called? Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> oh no, I got poo right now. Um, transparency lock, that's the one, so that it does not escape outside of everything. Yeah. Anyway, you can kind of start to see them coming together. When I do this kind of stuff too, I don't like using the colors straight away because I knew I wanted them all different all like slightly different skin tones, so they had a bit of a tint of the, the blood color on them. Um, but I wanted to just start it off with a flat gray, and we've got the orange and the kind of just grays and blacks. So just just grayscale basically, so I can see where everything is a little bit tidier, and then we worry about colors later because that's oh, it's a whole different thing. I can't think about two things at the same time. <laughs> Just think, just kind of watching this back as well, it's making me think that I should do another video on maybe colour relativity or making a bunch of colours look nice all together. I've already done one video on that with kind of a very complicated thing where there was a bunch of colours to explain how I keep them all looking nice together. I'll put a link to that at the end of the video as well. Um, but it's basically just only using so many colours if you can help it and using them in multiple places. So if there's you know, if there's any other kind of purple in here, I'm going to use the same one that I've got here. Um, all of the oranges and yellows are the same where I've used those on everything else. I think initially I had a different color yellow for the eyes on them, but then I uh, joined it in with the one that I go and use on the horns a bit later. Everything's also slightly more warm tinted. Uh... All the skin colors are different. I think that's the only thing that I try and keep different is skin tones because there's so much variation in them. Um, and since all the trolls are gray anyway, it's very, very close and the changes are like very minor in them or just, you know, very color shifted from colors that I already, already have in there. So they kind of they kind of work together all right anyway, but you can see like that gray on the pants I'm using on different bits. Uh, oh my god, his shoes gave me so much trouble because you can, you can see me using colors that are already in there and trying to get ones that work well. <laughs> work well together. But I have like a set. I have a black, I have a white, I have like a few different kinds of gray that I'm using, not counting the skin tones. Uh, I have like pink, a purple, the oranges and yellows are all the same that are used throughout it. Um, it's just very condensed with a colour palette. I try and condense colour palette as much as I can and still have it look nice and not have any colours read like the wrong colour, basically. You can see me changing them as I go along as well. I'm kind of hopping all over the place and comparing one character to another where I um, think I can use the same kind of colour on different things. Uh, you can see me changing that pink because it wasn't working very well and just testing out different colors like this. Oh man, I tried I tried to get a dress nice so many times until I got the right one <laughs> that I like the look of. I was like, green, red, how do I get them to work together? Like black, green, red, white, just those kind of colors. Like I couldn't get them how I wanted them until I figure out like, oh, I can make it green like this and it looks better. And then we have the little red shoes. And it looks cute like that. I kind of like that dress on her. I think that's my favorite little design thing in here, actually. Is it a little dress? <laughs> maybe, um, maybe those shoes with the brown and the white and the 
the like black rubber on them. I think that's cool too. Um, yeah, I only really vary from a color that I already have in there if it's not reading like the color it needs to be. Like for example, if I used like any of the pinks or the purples for this dude's little shirt, then it would not read as the same kind of purple that I'm looking for. He's a little bit more almost magenta -y. He's not the same and he needs to be distinct from the other purples. Also, all these little details on WM were really annoying because I couldn't pick colours that I wanted on him. <laughs> Initially, I wanted his um, dungarees to be a bit of a lighter colour so that they would blend in with him being white, but I don't know. I wanted like a low contrast on that, but he ended up looking better just with the dungarees being darker, so I went with that instead. So he's got the same kind of mid-grey that some of the other ones have on their pants and everything. I'm using that, uh, like I say, any of the blacks that I'm using um, for markings and stuff or shirts, they're the same as the hair on the trolls. I also decided not to put any shine on the hair on this one because I didn't think it would look very good. I preferred it with just um, the little shadows in it that I go and put in later. I think that's one of the things that I pick a slightly, just, just slightly darker black or grey in there because they're not all like perfectly black because that would drown it out too much. Um, it's one of the specific ones that I pick but it gets used in so many places that it just looks fine anyway and it's not like too much of a difference. Um, also these little shadows that I'm putting in, they are specifically picked for like each skin tone. Uh, but yeah, most, most of the colours, most of the colours are used in multiple places where I can, more than one place or more than one character in the illustration. There I go with the yellow that's the same as on the eyes so that's getting more detail on. I didn't have any like darker oranges or reds that I wanted to bring in so I think I left those off of the horns maybe? It looks like it right now that might be wrong I might go and choose that red that's on the shoes actually because that's a red that I already have in there. It's kind of funny watching these back because, well, when I'm watching them, I don't know what the end result is going to look like exactly. Or I start thinking about these details again and I'm like, oh, I wonder if I'm going to do that. And then I usually do it later. Like, I can kind of predict my thought process. Because, <laughs> well, it's my thought process. So, yeah, <laughs> of course I can. It's just kind of weird to see it happen again. Like, oh, I hope I'm going to do this thing. And then I do. And it's like, ah, good. Ah, good. It kind of puts my mind to rest a little bit. Like, okay, no, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing what I think I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing what I think I'm doing, it's fine. Uh, more extra little details. I'm doing everything with the pen now just to fill all the last little bits in. I'm gonna be doing the faces and everything as well. I like that hand. I, I like drawing like slappy hands and getting them kind of foreshortening on the fingers. That's, that's starting to be a thing that I really like. Also that pink I like quite a lot. Kind of corally soft pink and the, ooh, what would you call that, navy blue as well? Kind of neat, yeah, kind of navy blue. It's like voidy blue, void god tier blue. And then I think I used like a little bit of a darker one just to put the pattern on. Yeah, it's it's not like too different, so it doesn't stand out too much and look annoying. Uh, a little bit of a pattern on it, just drawing the lines on. Again, this is with the pen, but it may have been easier for me to do that with the thing. I think I was uh, frustrating myself a little bit with that as I was doing it, <laughs> which I could have avoided, but hey ho. I, sometimes I get stuck nibbling with the pen and then I'm just like, oh, I should have used the, I should have used the lasso fill. Should have used the lasso fill. And these little details, little, uh, little toggles. I thought it'd be cute with little toggles on. In a little fuzzy coat. <laughs> fuzzy little coat. I really like drawing coat fuzz actually. I'm, I'm kind of almost getting the flow of fuzzy things. And then we're going to draw our face on too. Everyone else is slowly starting to get a face and she has little eyelashes too. I wanted to give her a hat but it just, I don't know, it kind of looked out with place on her and I didn't like it very much. So I just left it. I, I do like chess people with hats, but it just was not going with her outfit at all. Like, not at all. She's supposed to look kind of preppy, but I don't know. There's not really any hats that go with that or looked okay on her. She's a, she's a bit too fancy for a hat. <laughs> a little bit too fancy. And then just filling in all the other bits. Picking more shadowy colours for each of them. And filling them in more little bits of hair. I think there's transparency on the bull wings as well. It's like its own separate thing. 
filling all that in. I had a bit of an issue with that chunk because it was all over the top of itself. I made a little bit of a mess of it. Um, what I do go and put in is shine on the eyeballs, on the trolls. I wasn't sure of it originally because I thought maybe if I'm going to start putting highlights in on the eyeballs, maybe I need them on the hair, but oh yeah, there I go with the red. Okay, yeah, it turned out the red wasn't like too different from the orange or like, you know, standing out and looking too odd. So I go and put that in the horns too. But I also tested out the eye shine on the Carapissians and it just it just wasn't looking right or I wouldn't have been able to put it on SR anyway because her eyes are just white anyway and I couldn't really pick a light white. It wasn't showing up very much. Um, and I also don't want to like blow it out and make it too contrasty with just random white blobs that didn't fit in with the colour scheme and made them too light. Um, the base white that I have for everything is slightly tinted towards yellow, I think. It's either like yellowy or bluish or, you know, slightly kind of red just so it's off tinted and not very, very stark white. Um, there I go with the hair, just putting a little bit of shape in it. I actually really like doing this kind of thing. Um, when I start bringing in these extra little bits of different colours for the shading and the details, just to get, you know, fabric folds and stuff, it all starts to look so much nicer and I really like it a lot. It's it's really satisfying to put extra colours on. I, I tried it with a bunch of overlays too, but they, uh, ooh, they were not working. I think the colours I used initially were fine on this one, which is kind of rare, but I didn't think I could make them any better. All the gradients were looking kind of funny. Um, I was trying to aim for just the colours looking nice on their own though, because, I don't know, all my old colours, all my flats on things, I used to really not like the way that they looked. So I'm trying to force myself to do more things that just rely on the colours being nice. Because, I don't know, if something's drawn and it's got line art, you can usually get away with it looking a bit dodgy on the colours because the line art will hold it up but you really can't get away with that. <laughs> you really can't get away with that as much when it's lineless. Ooh, you really cannot. You've got to have nice colours. So I'm trying I'm trying to force it. I'm trying to force it to happen. It's slowly happening. Oh, it's going it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while but we're doing okay. <laughs> um some of my like AU panels that I've been doing, I'm kinda liking the colour schemes on them though. Uh, I'm trying to keep it so I pick one colour scheme for an update and then I can just use it for all the panels in that. So that, that's been pretty useful because then it just is going to fill in all the drawing and like eye dropping colours and it makes it a lot easier and quicker than I guess shifting it too much. Um, I don't want to go and use sprites in any of my updates. I imagine I will at some point because I'm sure I'll get lazy and fed up <laughs> at some point. But right now I'm like, no, I'm drawing every panel. Uh, anyways, just a little bit more. I think I missed a swirl of her hair on the side there and it really annoys me because it does not make the legs on Tinkerbell stand out very well at all. Um, I like the feet and the shoes that I did, actually. I think I think that's my favourite thing in this. Also, the dog looks okay. The dog does not look funny. Um, and it's obvious that it's SR's dog because of the little collar and the pink leash. <laughs> yeah, you can see me trying to put eye shine on there. WM there and it just looks it just looked really weird so I didn't do it on him uh, and then last little bit on the selfie oh my, oh my, she's taking, taking a selfie she's got a selfie sticker <laughs> and yeah yeah just more details teeth and things and tongues I always forget that I have like grayish mouths and it's not like blood color I know a lot of people like to um stylize them and make them kind of blood color but I don't know I kind of like both. I kind of like both, but I wanted to simplify it down for this one and not bring in more orange because it just looked kind of muddy anyway. Um, doing a little bit more shadows on the faces, am I? I know I forgot eyebrows on my dude here for a long while and couldn't figure out why it looked funny. <laughs> um, little details on the shorts and things. Yeah. Yeah. I think something I used to fall into with doing these like little details that I mentioned, like almost shadows and just lines on the clothes. Um, I used to pick the base color and then just make it darker, but that tends to look pretty bad because it's basically the same color and it just, I don't know, it just looks really flat. So I always try and tint them slightly, either, you know, skew them one side or the other on on the colour wheel so that you get something a little bit different. 
and I think that helps quite a lot and it doesn't you know it doesn't have to be the same on all of them like especially on those little beige pants by bringing in a bit more of a darker orange on them it almost brings the entire color down a little bit and makes it more orangey which I kind of like I don't know I'm kind of getting the hang of color relativity and how they how they affect each other especially when it's just on the same block of color it will change the overall color just just a teensy bit that that probably sounds mad because they're you know they're all kind of reading as the colors that they should okay in this but ooh wee ooh wee there's other things they've done where it just skews them completely if you get it weird <laughs> it just looks odd um or you can create like nice contrasts like with on the green dress where it's very line and it could probably read as yellow if you put a different color in those shadows but because i went and put more of a mid green or, you know, slightly more towards a green, a blue green. It brings it more towards just green. Uh, and then in the background, just fill that in, make it quite simple. I think I put a bit of texture on the floor just so it's kind of gravelly as well, or has like a little bit of, a little bit of stone texture and a little bit of shadow underneath them just to ground them, which I thought looked kind of assy because I, I didn't think there was a way on this to make the shadow look nice just because they weren't shaded in the same way that a shadow would have to fall <laughs> so I did my best with it but I don't know that's a that's a dilemma I need to figure out is that one um and then also a bit of a texture I tried I tried different textures on it but I just like the the kind of cardboardy one I think looked the best also that one with petals I had some nice paper with petals in it a while ago that I scanned that I really like um but yeah this cardboardy one was the best it just kind of threw off the very harsh edges on it and uh yeah there we go i think we're done so have a watching i hope this helped if it did give us a like share if you think it'll help someone else and subscribe for new videos on saturdays i'll put links now to all the other videos that i've mentioned in this as well but, but bye, -bye.